Thank you, Natasha, for reminding me of that. If I had just asked you that question, you reminded us to record the meeting. So I appreciate it. <laughs> so, um, all right. So that's kind of the agenda items then. It's basically three things. One is I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I've heard so far and what we know about the market. Two, what people are doing around sellers, you know, just like basically how are we getting sellers? How are we managing that process? Uh, there's not that many of them right now, and I know that. So we want to address that too. Three, what we're doing with buyers and how do we talk to them about this really tough market and honestly sort of addressing some real concerns around what, what's happening in that area. And then the last part is just around pocket listings and in general, just how we handle those and what we're going to do first. So does that make sense? And so as we go through this, if it does, you know, please use the chat. Uh, un you can unmute yourself. You can ask questions. This is to be interactive and just anything that's going on with that. So I I'd like to start maybe with buyers first. Uh, I've heard a lot from people, even on this call, as I'm looking at some of the names on here, I've heard from you know, a lot of you just basically on what's happening with buyers and how you're having to address situations where you're going for an offer or you're going for a property and you're, you're losing out on that property often because it went to listing, I mean, it went to under contract before it even hit the PLN, right? So there's light pockets going, going, um, going under contract. Sometimes they're not even showing up at all until we find out that they were sold, you know, once they're listed by somebody afterwards when they've closed and we didn't even know that property was available. So I want to talk about that. And a couple of things. One is Several people have been really upset about it, which I completely understand. If you've got seven or eight or 14 offers on a property, there's going to be a lot of people that miss out on that property. There's also, uh, so just to, to sort of address this, every time there's been sort of a, a hard feeling around this, I have circled back with the listing agent and at one time even talked to a client who called me about it, uh, the client themselves. So far, often what's happening is the client is also aware that there's a pandemic going on. They're really nervous about this market. They're very nervous about all the people coming through their house and they are enticed by the fact that it's sold before for asking price before anyone had to come through their house. Um, they're aware also that the market is really, really crazy right now and that they're upsetting neighbors or upsetting friends who've asked them to, can I get into your house? Can I see your house? So from a social perspective, we're so far, everything I've seen has been where where the client really, it's in their best interest because that's what they want. They want to make sure that they don't have a billion people coming through and so forth. So I just was, would ask like on the buy side, if you are having strong feelings about it, just keep in mind that you very well could be on the sales side next time. And if you're in that position, you're gonna have to manage some hard, hard feelings. So I just wanna at least throw that into the mix. It doesn't mean that you don't have a right to be upset. And it doesn't mean that you don't have a right to be um, really, up, your clients are gonna be upset with you. So the way I would like to just throw a couple ideas out. One was, if you are in a situation where you have a pocket listing and you are, your clients, that's what they want, you know, you're, you're, you really do have, you know, which I'm sure you do, but you have your best interest of your clients at heart when you're doing it. The more information you're able to give to the selling agents, to the buyer's agents, I should say, the better you're helping them out. We're helping each other, right? So if you could, you know, saying things like, well, I just can't tell you because it's, you know, it's secret or something. Talk with your, with your sellers and let them understand that the situation's, you know, it is, it's a rough position for somebody to be on the other end of it. Often they'll say, well, you know what, let them know that this is what we wanted to do and here's how we're going about it. That gives at least the buyer's agent the opportunity to go back to their sellers and say, this is what's happening. I'm in the know. Because I, even though we didn't get it, I, I, it's not like I don't know what's going on. It's just that we weren't able to get into this particular listing. And that's what's happening there. It's not ideal, but at the very least, we can look out for each other that way, right? Because then somebody can go back and say, you know, I'm sorry we didn't get it, but here's how we're going to continue to work together and how we're going to get to the next one sort of thing. Uh, we've had a couple of situations where people were told, um, and not even just from that properties, this is across the board, obviously, throughout the North Shore. But we've had situations where people are told, well, you know, I'm sorry, my client won't let me give you that information. Or, you know, because the, I'm sure that the agent's nervous as well, and they're trying to do the best they can, but it doesn't help us. And we've had, we've had buyer's agents that have been fired by their clients because they feel like they don't have enough information on what's going on in the market. And that's not fair either, right? So there's a way to just put, if we could just be sort of sensitive to the fact that, yes, this is really uncomfortable for everybody. It's just uncomfortable. But the more information, the more we look out for each other, the better it is for that. 
Um, pocket listings are legal. There's nothing wrong with pocket listings. It's the exact same thing that happened when we used to have meetings in person. And at the end of a meeting, we would stand up and say, what, what is, what's coming on the road? You know, we would say it verbally. And that's how we used to talk about it. So now we don't have that option as much because of what's happening right now, at least for now. So things like lists or telling people about it kind of springs up because of necessity, right? So it's like people are just trying to do the best they can to, to get this information out there. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. And we have some ideas to address that specifically too. So, and I'm doing a lot of talking, but I'll, I swear to God, I'll let you guys talk too. <laughs> so I've really spent a lot of time thinking about this and I'm really trying to do something, you know, the best that we can to make sure that we're covering for each other, right? So, and a couple of people who just, just this morning, and you know who you are, you're on this call, had come up with this idea. And I said, well, that's very funny because we're just about to talk about this. But for Tuesdays where we used to do, well, we still do a uh, dish. The problem is things are selling way before we get to a Tuesday. <laughs> we're able to talk about it. You know, what was on the mark and what was on the tour. But what I'd like to do is continue to do dish. We're gonna make that Zoom for now just because of what's happening, it has more attendance. We could certainly attend in person if you'd like as well in the conference room, we'll have it on the wall. But I'd also like to call it empty your pockets. <laughs> and so every Tuesday, what we'll do is if you've got stuff that's coming on the market and you're able to like talk about it and your clients have given you permission and that's the direction we're gonna go, every Tuesday we'll be doing that. Obviously, if you have things ahead of time, I would also just, I, and I know I've talked to a lot of you about this, so I do understand sort of the feelings around it, but. Our agent app was specifically built in certain ways to deal with pocket listings. And I know that it's the iterations of it have changed. So a lot of us in our office, we let's face it, we are the most advanced office in sales in the North Shore, right? We have more sales out of this office than anybody else. We also have really seasoned agents that have been doing this for a little bit. So I just want you to know that the, the app itself has changed quite a bit, even in the last year. And you can use it almost like Zenlist. You can set a parameter for where you'd like to see pockets come and we'll actually forward it to you so you'll get it in your email or you'll, you'll get it through the app, you'll get a notification at the same time that it just hit the market. So you're gonna find out immediately. It's a great tool. It's faster than any other thing that's out there. It's faster than an email list. It's faster than talking about it. So I just want, I know a lot of people don't like it and I do understand that, but I just wanna let you know that how easy it is. I went back and I looked to see how many people are searching for pockets on the North shore and using it, You know, just the number of hits. And in the last month, which is actually probably slow, we had 3,500 searches. So it's not like it's not being used. And some of the agents in this room, I like to say this, this, this Zoom room, this virtual room, are actually using it right now and they're using it pretty effectively. So they're finding out things that are happening. So what I'd like to do is uh, after this meeting, this is the first thing we're doing is we're gonna have empty your pockets on Tuesdays. <laughs> we're gonna have, you know, during, during a dish, we're gonna have a class on how to use, uh, a refresher course on how to use the agent app, but specifically on how to set up a search for pocket listings in our area. And we'll just do it together and just get it done like we've done some of these CMA meetings. And that way it'll be set up for you. You don't have to go into the app. You don't have to use it. You'll actually get notified when something comes up. It'll just pop up for you at the moment it happens. On the other end of it, if you're the listing agent, I don't know if you know this, but when you're going into the DMS and you put in your, your details about the property and you're just creating a property folder, there's a little box there that says, you just click it and it says, can I make this a pocket listing? And it's going to go all, it'll just immediately show up with your pictures, with everything right in the app. So it really is very, very easy to use just for that. And I know that there are some things I've heard from a, a really a lot of you that you feel like it's clunky and it's a little harder to use. And I, I get that we're, you know, we're, those things are, they're going, but at the very least we could set it up. Oh, Mary, you had a question. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just was going to put something in the chat and it says chat's disabled. Oh, well, that's weird. So Let maybe. Me. Maybe it's just on my end. Uh, you should be able to know. Thank you. Okay. Well, I could say it right now. I wonder, um, Tom, if there's, um, and I'm not going to talk that much either, uh, if there's a way that we would not have to wait till Tuesday, Tuesday of every week, is there a way that like things could be sent to like MLS Winnetka or Kendall or somebody specifically as you get them? Just because I feel like um, if we're waiting till Tuesday, by the time Tuesday rolls around, it's too late or it's like already in the system. So we could, it's just, I, and let me ask you this, um, are, are you opposed to using, because the app will actually be immediate, like we were just talking about, so what will happen is it'll actually just, it'll just show up in your email box, you don't have to go anywhere to find it, and we don't have to compile lists that are, I think are going to be kind of changing every single day, but 
but I'm happy to, to entertain that if, if we don't think we're going to use the app at all. And that's not an option. I, I'd be curious to see what other people think. I use the app. I just think it's like, it's just, it's, it's just so much and so many emails and so many people, you know, from the city saying like, I've got buyers on the North shore. I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, we all have buyers and not that I'm trying to be preferential to our office, but like, I just delete those because I'm like, I don't even, you don't, right. even, I don't even know who you are. I don't yeah. even care. I'd rather give it to Cheryl or Katie or Natasha, who I'm looking at right now. I mean, right. or not even give it to them, but I just, I, I, I don't see myself. I do use it. I don't see that as a good tool for me. Yeah. So what I think might we could, and I appreciate that, Marin. I know we've talked about this before. I've talked to several of you. For those that would use it, because you don't have to get all of those emails, right? So that's what I'm saying. If we all set it up together, you don't have to get all the buyer requests. You won't get the buyer requests on it. You would just be, you could set a parameter that says, I would just like to hear about pocket listings that are in this particular area. And that's when you get the email. All the others are turned off. You could also pick the geography of which towns you want that to be in. You could do it. It's it's pretty, it does some pretty cool things, but I hear you. So we could set those up. Um, let's try that. So what we'll do is if if we can have them sent to, to Kendall and then she'll compile the lists and then how, I guess we could send those out every night to everybody on, on what's coming, right? That's kind of what we're thinking. I'm just, I mean, you guys, everybody else can chime in. I just think like, I don't know. Everybody, I'm just curious to see what other people think. Sure, please. I mean, it seems like when, um, uh, when we're putting in, uh, you know, all the paperwork, we're busy with coordinating signs and photos and all this other stuff. And so maybe a deal get full or maybe a property folder gets started. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we're just communicating with the front desk. So I'm wondering if since they do have to see and they have to get your signature on a listing agreement, is there a way it could generate out some sort of an email that says, hey, can we go ahead and put this on our list? And then maybe it's ready to go on the list for the agent and ready. And so that we're in good shape. So what we'd have to do, and let me just think about this out loud. And I, 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 I think we're there. I mean, because we, this is, we're not the first to sort of come up with these ideas. Like this has been going on for a while. It's just, I think what's happening right now is it's so critical because there's so few. So we're all much more in tune with what's happening with it. Um, we can do that. We're going to have to have a form probably just because not everybody wants theirs to go onto a pocket listing. So as we're signing them, we would have to have your permission. Like we'd have to have something that says, now put this on a list. And then, I mean, maybe we could put it into the, well, let's, let's explore that. Maybe there's a way to do that. So that way we can add that to the items that we do when we're putting those into the system. Because part of I our think it's is the, is the pocket listing form and the, you know, the um, private listing MLS form too, has to go in the packet. So maybe the agent well, just has yeah. Actually, what that form does is it says, Steve, we could, uh, here, I'm going to mute Steve real quick. There we go. So um, what, what we'll have to, what that says is to keep it exempt from putting it into the system, but it doesn't necessarily say to send it out to everybody as a pocket in the office. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll explore that. Let's, we'll take a look at Stacey it. Stacy had a good point too, Tom, that not everything comes to the front desk and it I know. just goes straight into the MLS. So that system may omit important listings people would want to know about. So. I mean, I, I kind of feel like we, we, we're not the first to sort of crack this, this apple, you know, on what we're doing as a company. So I, uh, but I, well, let's explore it. Maybe there's a way we can put it into the app for you. And the other thing I was also thinking is what if we set up your apps for you? So like Mary, when you get, um, when you get, and we'll, uh, Katie, we'll get, that's a good question too. I want to talk about those as well, private Facebook groups. But you, you know, the, if we set it up for you so that the only thing you're getting is when a new app, when a new pocket listing comes up and you're getting notified that that's the case, it just happened because we already have the system sort of in place that works with our DMS and we set it up for you. What if we had IT just do it? And so that the only thing you're getting are pocket listings out of the office that come to you uh, pushed. I mean, I wonder if that would be, because we already have, this whole system in place for that. And it's immediate. Like it's actually, you're finding out the same time I am <laughs> because, because it's happening as soon as you're putting it into the system. But, I, but let's explore it. I, I think these are really good ideas and I don't want to not, not do it. You know what I mean? Like, so let me just be, be exhaustive and see if there's another way to do this that would be helpful to you guys. 
um, on that part of it. Is there? Um, wow. yeah, um, I have a question. What about, um, I think to Mary's point, it being such a tight market, sometimes we can get a heads up with the coming soon type of situation where you know you're getting it on a, or it can be shown a certain, um, those are the kinds of things I think that we call Kendall, we have some kind of a list um, so that we have a heads up. Yeah, no, that's, a, good, that's a really good idea. Another, yeah. another issue because there was a discussion about this on, um, in the Highland Park Glencoe meeting. And somebody um, gave an example of a property not here, um, whereby the market was so, so tight. A seller let it be known that the house was coming on the market. Right. Five people called the agent. The sellers wanted the agent to show the property. The agent had already put in the app first showings on such and such a date. These people who had knowledge because of the seller talking and the word circulating and them they wanting the showings to start even before February 3rd, she had five offers before February 3rd and all the people who followed the directions on the pocket listing got shut out and of course were furious. And I think it's those kinds of situations that get us into trouble. Mm, yeah, good point. And I th that's a good point. If I, I think that the idea around this is, is definitely, we wanna get the information out as fast as possible to everybody at the same. So if it says first showing start February, don't put that in if you're having showings before then, because it makes us look terrible as agents to our clients. And to your point, they fire us because according to this agent who gave the story, yeah, um, it's, it's, it caused a lot of trouble. Yeah, she's not alone either. There's, I have heard anecdotal stories of that happening quite a bit. So, I mean, they're not anecdotal if they happen quite a bit, I guess. That's all I'm But I, I do think uh, it is important that we get the information out as fast as we can to everybody and that we treat everybody the same way with that information, like you said. And it's a good reminder on that part, too. So what I'm going to, I, I, I don't want us to get too bogged down since we've got some stuff to cover. But here's what I'm hearing. And you tell me if I'm hearing everything. Um, we're going to look at having Kendall create a sheet that we're, we're going to see how that could work out. So we'll have a sheet as, as if you guys give us the indication that that could be put on a pocket listing because we're going to need that direction from you, then we will put together a sheet and we'll send that out as soon as we can uh, each night. The other thing is, uh, I, I for those that do use the the app, then what we'll do is we'll set we'll have a class for people to set it up so that when a pocket is indicated in the DMS, which a lot of people are doing, then the uh, that you'll get that access, you'll have access to that as well. And then for those people who might not get to putting your, making your property folder in time or doing that, then if you just let us know that it's supposed to be on there and you've got the paperwork to do that, we'll, we'll try that both. Is that that seems like a good hybrid? I also would still like to have on Tuesdays just the opportunity for people to talk about what's coming up. Um, you know, it may be too late, but uh we could try that um mary grant's asking do you mean coming sooner pocket so the the question is there's there's a couple of different things if you do not have a listing agreement that's signed at all and you want to let people know and i know mary we talked about this i think this week the uh it's really not a pocket yet really you don't have anything really but you could probably tell people that the thing is we just have to be sensitive about what we're telling people if you don't have a listing agreement yet I mean, that's at your risk, right? You, you do what you do to do that. But is it really helpful like to say, oh yeah, we've got stuff coming? And maybe, I mean, in certain circumstances and I've heard some stories where it actually is helpful. You know, there, there is some services. But I think in general, it's like if once we have a listing agreement, then we can talk about it being a pocket in general. Coming soon is sort of the same thing, I think, but you guys might have a different opinion of what that looks like. PLN is when you've actually gotten permission to put it into the PLN and it's, 
it's almost like MLS light now. It's kind of changed from being sort of what it originally was set up to be. And then you've got the full, you know, general MLS as they call it. But is, does someone have a different definition for that instead of coming soon? I just wanna make sure we're using the same vernacular. I think it's a good question. No, okay. So the other thing is about um, Sally O'Donnell said at, at comments of, you know, if you do say that you're going to have showing starting at a particular date, it's kind of an incumbent on you to make sure that the dates, that's the date you start having showings. Eve, yes, there's gonna be some exceptions and there's been exceptions across the board. There's been a couple even in our office where somebody put it on Facebook even before that we're supposed yes. to do it. And they're allowed to do that, right? They're, they're the owner yes. of the house. We can't control that so much, then it's kind of incumbent us to go back, talk to our clients and decide if we can move up the showings sooner because of that. Or maybe when you're having your list agreement signed, talking to them about what happens when those types of things take place, since we're starting to see it. In the past, it hasn't been as dramatic an experience as it is now, right? It's much more, much more um, difficult for us when we get into those situations. Um, Anything else on that? Because so I so I've walked away. I'm walking away with three things. And does it make sense for us to do the Tuesdays though? Because if it's too late for that, then I don't want to waste anyone's time on that. Because I do hear what you're saying. It was just sort of an idea, but it may be overkill if we're doing a list and we're like getting people's system set up for the uh, with the app. What do you guys think of a Tuesday? Oh, okay, still Tuesdays for sure. All right. Well, then we'll we'll do all three, and we'll just sort of see how this um, goes forward. Um, Okay, so we'll do we'll do all three. I love the idea of Tuesdays being via Zoom too. That's really helpful. Okay, great. You bet, Natasha. Um, all right, and then we'll do both then. So if some people come in. We'll, we have we did get it set up. I asked IT to set it up, so we do do Zoom in that room as well. We'll work out some of the nuances of it because sometimes you know, you just want to make sure everybody feels included, and we'll work on that, which will be good. Um, I, Tom, another thing that came up in that other meeting was it's so important to have communication with your seller to, to let them know all this that's going on and the, the different processes and their choices of how they want it handled beforehand um, so that they have an understanding of what each means in yeah. terms of I think sometimes we assume they, that they know what a packet listing is. They know what a coming soon means um, and kind of go over it with them and have a timetable for them so they can see how it works. Yeah. What's most important to them? Do exposure to everybody or getting it done quickly with fewer showing? You know, I think that sometimes with what's going on now, we don't do enough of that. A really good good reminder and we, we do need to talk about each of those levels and what happens with that and talk about all the things thank you Eva. that's a really good point you know like what what does each of those mean and then the other thing might be if you're about to go out on facebook or if you're about to start telling your neighbors that that's going to be something that we're going to have to address because that's going to cause you know friction sometimes you know <laughs> allowed to do that god bless you steve thank you <laughs> so, so um all right good so uh, the other thing I was going to talk about listings, this, the people in this room generate more activity on the North Shore than the other agents on, for any other brokerage firm. We have a lot of influence on what's happening in the market here, right in this room, which is pretty impressive. So one of the things um, that I've seen, so a lot of people have been asking me on one-on-ones, and if you ever want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, if you're feeling like I just need some like direction on my, off, on my, my own business, I'm still 100% available. Kendall has access to my calendar. I have Calendly out every time we have our office meetings, I send out that. So please know that I'm always available to you to talk about it so you're not alone. I just think sometimes when things get like this, we start, and I'm starting to sense it a little bit with some people that we feel a little lonely. We feel a little bit alone. It's a little, it's a tough market. Just know that I'm here and there's stuff that's happening that we can help with, okay? So just, just know that. Um, the other part I was going to say is, um, that um, there's, I've talked to, about a couple of people about this. So there is something that is working on getting listings and I'm seeing it work with several agents. So I wanna kind of give you this clue and I've talked to several of you about it, but not everybody. We have the ability, or there's this tool that I've been using and I've talked to several, so I'm just gonna go over this briefly because we're gonna go into more details, but you can send our digital CMA to previous clients as a way of saying, 
you know what? I just want to let you know that we've got this really cool new tool because it's cool to them. You create a CMA for them. And then there's specific wording that I'd put into the email that goes with it that says, hey, can you believe it's been seven years, even if it's been seven years since I've spoken with you? <laughs> but can you believe it's been seven years since I've you bought your home? Or even if you sold the home and you bought the home, you know, that I, that I was on that side of the deal, um, I'd love to just provide this little update on what your home is worth. You can't believe this market. It's crazy kind of thing. All you're doing is going to them with like a gift. It's all about their home. We've had 100% open rate so far for the people that I've been talking to about doing it. And what they do is they go through and, and you say, you know, this is based on what I remember your home looking like. Cause I, if you're like me, I remember the home more than I even remember them sometimes. Like I remember the details and you can actually kind of create a, a very general CMA for them and says, you know, this is just based on what I remember from the house. It's based on the, you know, you could tell them the criteria, the number of bedrooms and baths in your neighborhood. You're over the next couple of weeks, months, however you've set it up, you're going to see if there's any changes in the market, what's going on, but it's kind of surprising what's happening in this market. All you're doing is providing them a gift. You're not asking for a referral. You're not asking if they want to sell their house. You're just saying this is a really, you know, it's a cool new program. You can play with it. If they tend to be technical people, you can do a lot on that CMA. And I've had clients where they were like kind of the engineering type. They can change the parameters. They can change the number of beds and baths. They can really look at their own. And it's a tool specifically about their house, right? It's pretty cool. I put a clause in there that says, oh, by the way, this is based on what I remember of your house. If you've done any improvements to it, if you've done anything that, you know, that I don't know about, that's actually going to increase the value of your house. I'm happy to drop by and take a quick look and see if um, we could, you know, that we can make this even more accurate for you. And that will, of course, increase the value of your home. I will already tell you, I won't say who it is, but someone in this uh, who's not on right now, but somebody got a listing from it the first week trying it, like who doesn't do technology at all. And it really does work because they'll be like, oh, I can't believe you just talked to me about this. I can't. And often we're really afraid to talk to people if it's been seven years, eight years, nine years, 10 years, because we think, oh my gosh, I can't believe, I, at least I did. I, I would always have that like little cringe of guilt. Like, I can't believe I didn't talk to them or I let that go or where it was. And now I'm almost embarrassed to reach out to them again. In this particular case, all you're doing is providing a tool. You're saying, just because they're not thinking the same way. They're not thinking, oh, I can't believe they never called me. So I would just do where you basically say, I can't believe it's been six years. This you probably heard about the market. This is this new tool. It's all about your house, and it's it's kind of like a gift, and it's a really cool tool, and it'll continue to show them for the next three or four months. It works. So we're getting a really high uptake on people opening it, and at the very least, it opens the door again for you to start talking to people you haven't talked to in a long time. Let's say you were like me when I first started, and you don't have a huge list of buyers you know, or sellers, I should say, or they've moved out of town or whatever your particular situation looks like, you can go into Remind and do it for your neighborhood and say, you know, I just can't believe how much the market's changed. Here's the value of your house. If you don't have their email, there's still the old fashioned way where you print it out and leave it on their door, which I used to do as an agent um, in the beginning, you know, so this is the kind of time where I think these types of behavior, like this type of activity needs to be rethought again because the market has changed a lot. And it just has. So we just need to change with it. And these are some things we could do. So with, to that in mind, I, I'm going to set up two CMA-athons. <laughs> and I think some of you have been with the, uh, this, we've done the CRM ones. That we've had about four or five of those meetings where we just all sat together and just did our CRMs and cleaned them up and did it. We can continue to do those. But I'd like to sit down and we're going to, I'll send out two more invites for this week where we could just go by Zoom and we'll create the CRMs I'm sorry, the CMAs together, I'll go over the wording on how you can send it out with and send it to five people. We'll just do it together, if that makes sense. So I'll do it twice. And then if we need more on those, we'll do them. But it's a great way to drum up business. This, As I said, this office is the most productive there is in the North Shore. Between all of us, we probably can really start getting the ball rolling on, on some new activity. And I think that would be a huge effect on all of us. So just, just a thought for that. I'll send it out. I don't know if that sounds appealing to you guys, just let me know in the, in the uh, chat. Uh, Cause I feel like I'm talking a lot and um, but uh, okay, good. There's a couple of people. So we'll, we'll definitely do that. Then um, on the buy side, and then we'll, we'll, I really want to hear about, you know, as well as we go through this, but on the buy side, I've heard some things. Um, uh, Megan, yes, I would do it to anybody. You could do it in the last 18 months for sure as well, just cause it's a gift and it just gets you in front of them a little bit. Um, on the buy side, I would definitely be doing buyer meetings more than ever. And a lot of us don't do it. This office is very seasoned. 
We've been doing this for a long time. We have our way of doing things, but buyer meetings, if you look at the perfect buyer presentation day two, it kind of goes specifically on like why to set up a meeting with someone. It really cements the relationship and they're probably a little slippier than the past buyers right now because of all the things like Eve mentioned before about that situation you know, that happened there. We've, we've got buyers that are really looking to, to get in touch with somebody that they feel is gonna have the inside edge over all the other agents out there. It's more critical than ever. So having a buyer meeting where you actually sit down and you sit, you know, have bring them into the office, take them through the process and talk about the things that we just mentioned. You know, the fact that there's there's going to be five or six people for every single, you know, there, there may be five or six offers for every house that we find. So let's get our ducks in a row, figure out what we're going to do. And then sometimes it's just a matter of telling them what you're doing for them. And I was super guilty of this. I, I felt like I worked really hard for my clients. I, I did everything I could to, to find places. I did all those things, but I didn't always take the time to tell them that's what I was doing. Like I was just doing it for them. So, you know, it, it became kind of evident to me that I wasn't selling my own self a little bit on that. So having a list, and if you will not see mine, or if you just look at the, the buyer presentation, a perfect buyer presentation, it lists all the things that you do for them in a particular day. And it'll show specifically why you're the right person to be with. Um, because we need to set the groundwork for that a little bit so that you're not losing out on buyers uh, because they feel like they didn't get what they needed. Um, and if you want, we could go over the buyer presentation as a group too, if that would be more useful than going and seeing a video because sometimes that's not the best thing to do. So let me know and I'm happy to set up a buyer presentation meeting. It's super fast, but it really has a huge effect. And on my team, a couple people didn't do it in the beginning. And one of them in specifically, she did it. She didn't do it. And then she had done it. And the difference between the two was so striking. She was like, all right, I'm a believer. Like we, we really need to be doing these because it just mm -hmm. that's that relationship. Um, okay. And then the last thing I, I just want to say is just to remind our, and then we'll, we'll open it up. But the last thing I just want to say is to be, you know, we've been really, really good about it. And I've actually talked to managing brokers at other brokerage firms on the North shore uh, the last two weeks. And I just think that we just need a reminder across the board to be gentle with each other. So far, everyone's been pretty good, but just understanding that the stress behaviors are going to be high over the next month or so. I am seeing more listing agreements coming on than last 24, 48 hours that I have in a while and just slowly starting to build up again. We're you know, very beginning of February. We haven't even gotten to Super Bowl Sunday yet, but we are starting to see stuff to start to loosen up. It's just the days on market are so short that as soon as they come, they get snapped up, right? So just a reminder to be kind of gentle with each other and understanding that if you're the buyer and you didn't get that house, it doesn't necessarily mean that they locked you out even if it's another brokerage firm and now I, I, you know, we just have to give each other the benefit of the doubt for the most part. Sometimes, you know, that doesn't feel that way, right? So <laughs> we need to do a Super Bowl raffle with squares. Okay, we'll get that. <laughs> I love that. We'll definitely do that. And there's a, also, just so you know, we've got everyone's photos from and, pick, and names from today. There is going to be a drawing for a really nice gift card today. So <laughs> I'll, I'll have that for you, but I love that idea. Um, so that, yeah, just, just be aware of that. You could be on the other end of it someday too, where you've got the listing and you're like, oh my God, I've got to go through this now and people are going to hate me because I'm trying to, to do the best I can for my clients. So just a gentle reminder on that part of it. But, so have I, let me open it up. What, if, what have you guys been hearing about pockets or have I not addressed anything that's happening? <laughs> Is there anything that I haven't addressed so far that you would like to, except Cheryl's dog, because that sounded like a happy dog. <laughs> this is our time yeah so i really do want to hear from you guys if there's anything else we can do or you had ideas that you think you know what or you just want to get something off your chest you know i'm all good i'm all yours i can tell you about my pocket <laughs> if let's, anyone. let's do it um i've got a pocket coming on in wilmette mckenzie school district um four beds three and a half baths um home walking distance, uh, you know, right off of Wilmette Avenue, about a block and a half down. But if anyone's interested, this is for eight at agents only, um, a little different situation, but we're only marketing to ad agents. And that should be uh, ready to show in about two weeks. 
And just to just to be clear on this one, uh, the reason she's saying that 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 was specific client direction that has nothing to do with that. That was a uh, is that Audrey? fair to say? Yes. Okay. Audrey, do you? Yeah. You, I'm so sorry because I was looking at my phone. Would you repeat what you just said about your packet, where it is, and everything? Yeah, it's McKenzie School District uh, on 17th Street in Wilmette. Uh, four beds, three and a half baths. Um, and we should be ready, uh, in about two to three weeks to show what I really would like to do is, um, have some people come through. I think I've tentatively scheduled, uh, scheduled it for the 15th. I'm going to try and have, um, some people come see it and, get opinions on price. I'm thinking 849, um, but I'd like to get some other opinions as well. It, it's a vintage house? Yeah, it was built in 1923. Um, I am gonna try and post up on the app this morning, uh, just okay. an outside photo, but okay. right now there's some work being done. Um, it's not, you know, it's definitely uh, an older home and, you know, it's a great layout, but the kitchen's older. They're trying to revive it a little bit, um, but we're going to update some lighting and do a few things there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, hey, uh, I, yeah, go ahead. I have, uh, I have a comment about something that's driving me freaking crazy. Please. And that's this constant request by agents saying, I've got a buyer for X, Y, Z. Okay. And it's not just in our office, but it's this, this barrage of, you know, these bullshit emails, because <laughs> don't you think if you had a list, so Joe Schmo from some brokerage company is saying, I'm looking for something in McKenzie. Well, are you going to call him? Are you going to send it to him? You're not going to do that, right? And it's just, it's such an annoyance. And then the other thing that goes on is these Facebook posts um, that are sort of similar. If we're going to use Facebook as a tool for that, would it be possible to set up an ad properties, not limited to Winnetka, because we've gone through that issue of exclusionary practices, that was a Facebook only group for ad properties agents to share these listings. I mean, we got people selling dog cages on that North Shore exempt listing Facebook page. But I'm not sure if anybody would be interested in that. And you can, you know, you can post it twice so that my, the pictures of my kid in El Salvador get pushed down. But um, <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there any benefit to that? Because we've subverted, honestly, all, brokerage, all brokerages and all agents have subverted the entire process, the entire intent of the PLN, right? Because we have sub PLN exempt listings, right? And right. so this whole notion that we live in a cooperative business OK, um, and trust me, I'm not getting screwed out by anybody because the nature of my practice, but people on the North Shore, particularly, um, you know, we 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 as an office, to a certain extent, as well as other agents have walked away from the whole concept of what the MLS is, which is this cooperative brokerage where we try to give other agents, all agents and the benefit of our client, the most exposure possible. So, you know. I'm not sure, I'm wondering if there's some ways, and I'm, I'm not criticizing or suggesting anybody's doing it differently, but that, that if we want to share our listings, you know, because nobody, you can't do a group email to the Winnick office about a listing. Nobody has control of that except you, Tom. Um, but I'm just wondering if that is something that we could look at. So yeah, there's because the app is the app is bullshit. I mean, the app you, you can't even the app is completely unusable as a practical matter. At least that's my experience. Yeah. So the idea around the Facebook 
group. Uh, there's some people on here. I don't know if they're still on. Uh, there was one set up for Glenview. Um, they, so let me just say this, let me back up a little bit. And I just want to say this out loud too, because I think it's, it's, um, important. The pocket listings have always been here. They've always been here, right? So it's exactly what happens when we used to go in our meetings. And at the end of the meeting, we would say, I've got, does anybody have anything coming on they wanted to talk about? Those were pocket listings. They're coming soon, as Mary was saying. Like, that, that's kind of the same thing, right? It's before, it's, you have a listing agreement or, you know, presumably, but it hasn't gone onto the, onto the MLS yet or even the PLM. It's like, this is coming soon. What Mary did, and I just want to hit this really hard on the head with that list, was that nature abhors a vacuum. And she did that from a place of love and a place of let, let's make this better and let's do something right for everybody, right? Because we don't meet in person. We don't get to meet in person because <laughs> there's a pandemic. So we're trying to figure out ways to get around this, right? So, and there's, it, it, there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? The idea is that we want to see what we can do to start getting going. It's just that we, it, what happens is, we, and we wanna make sure everyone's included and that it continues to grow and we get that to be something that's really big. So right now, what we want to do is. Can I move? I'm sorry. Oh, that's Karen. I'm just going to mute Karen. So, in that, what we want to do is figure out ways to get the information out to you guys as fast as we can, and to use all, every resource we can. Right. So, if we don't like the agent app, it's, it's you know, I was going to say something kind of funny, but it's too big a group. But if we don't like the agent app, then don't use it. 100%. Just that's not your that's not your tool. It's not for you. Several people do use it. If it is your tool and it works for you, great, continue to use it. What I'd like to ask is whenever you do fill out your paperwork, consider checking the the button that says you can make this a pocket because those that do follow the agent app will be able to see it plus it'll go onto our website for the coming soons. Does that make sense? So that that's just a tactic that people can use for that. There will be lists, there will always be email lists because everybody's had them. I was on one as an agent in Glenview that was actually with several brokerage firms. Like everyone just was putting this together because they're trying to get the word out to the people that they thought were sort of the top producers for their area. They, they come and go kind of thing. Facebook groups, the exact same thing. You guys can create a Facebook group. I, I don't know that we want to sanction one, but you guys can, we can create a Facebook group and there's, uh, we, I can get you in touch with the people that did it for Glenview and just see how it went for them. And, and that's okay too. The only thing to be aware of is as soon as somebody has public access, it has to be marked private and it has to be uh, sort of a curated group coming in because as soon as it's public, it's no longer a pocket. You've got 24 hours once it goes out to the public to put it to the PLN. So I just want to make that clear. Like if you use social media to talk about a pocket listing, you've got 24 hours to put it in the PLN or it could be a fine. And I would just say that people are a little litigious right now. And it's not even the agents, it's actually the buyers that are, that are the ones that are really, they're upset, right? They're, they're trying to find homes. So just be aware that those are the types of things. You can do group me, you can do, uh, you know, the, Lauren's idea of a modernized bulletin board. I mean, it's basically, that's what the Facebook marketplace is. Th those things are available, you can do them. Um, it's just that that's the, the, the format that we're trying to get people to do is the one that's tied in with the DMS. So we could set it up and, and maybe what I'll do, you know, Peter is actually get with you and sort of set, set it up for you so that you're just getting them without even having to go on the app. And it just forwards the information to you as soon as someone puts a pocket list. I'd just like to see if that would work for some people, but I, I don't want to beat a dead horse on that either. So it's just a tool that's there and that's kind of what it's, you know, what it's for. But if it's not good, then so, you know, we have to use other, uh, other options as well. One last thing I just want to make sure we address too that Grace brought up and I forgot to mention, I'd love to hear from you guys that are representing buyers, just really quickly, what's working. I'm going to give you a couple that Laura Fitzpatrick just phoned into me that worked for her and then see if there's others that you guys want to share, because that's where we really become powerful is if we do share these ideas. So three that I've seen that she's talking about that have worked. One is to, when you're going in, if you're not cash, um, because that's cash is always what's, you know, obviously, you know, not everybody can do that. If you can go in and say, look, we're going to have our inspection done. This is getting you guys set up ahead of time, right? Uh, we'll have our inspection done by the end of day tomorrow. And we promise that as long as there's no big, big deals going on, we're going to have attorney review wrapped up in three days. That's really powerful. I mean, that's something you can do and you have a little more control over that kind of moves you ahead. I'm seeing a lot of people saying an automatic 60 day rent back free. 
for the seller to find their place because their big concern right now is that they don't have some place to go. Um, I've heard varying things from different brokerage, I mean, mortgage brokers that we can't go past 60 days if you have a, lo a loan. But I'm also hearing that some people are already get, able to squeeze out 75 days for sort of VIPs and things like that. So yeah, just be aware that if the, it is not a cash deal and you're, they're using a lender that you've cleared this with the lender, that there's, that's a possibility that, you know, that they can do 60 days free and that that works with their, their, their package. Um, uh, and the other thing I would say about that is make sure that the attorney writes a really solid addendum and has an experience on how to do that. Otherwise you need really a rental agreement because you just want to protect your buyers thoroughly, you know, <laughs> because, it, you know, now they are officially renting from their own home kind of thing. It, you know, just, you just want to make sure that all the coverage is there and that they're protected legally and financially. Is there anything else you guys are seeing that's working for you as buyers agents or that you've heard about that's, that could help other people on the call? Nothing? Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is if you guys have anything that's working and getting ahead and you don't mind sharing it, if you could send it to me and then, oh, Lori, were you about to say something? I'm sorry, I just muted. No, okay. So if you do have anything that is working and you want to send that to me, I'll compile a list and also send that out weekly of anything that I'm hearing about that you guys are okay with me sharing that works. I'm not going to do anything obviously without your permission, but if there's stuff you don't mind sharing, um, I'd love to share that with everybody as well, just to give us a little bit of a leg up. Oh, that's a great question uh, about escalation clauses. I was so big on escalation clauses six months ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not as much right now. I, I think that the problem with them is we have so many offers coming in at the same time. We have agents that are really not comfortable with them. We have sellers that aren't super comfortable with them. That maybe you, so just two things to keep in mind. You can say, and, and please, please, please check out with your clients on this. I would give your clients all the options on ways things could come into them ahead of time because it's not our house. I just have to remind us, like, it's not our house. It's the client's house, right? And this is the client's deal and we work for them. But they may get an escalation clause. So it may make sense to talk about the different ways this could go if it, you know, if it does. The, um, I would uh, probably, if, if, if they decide they don't want to go with escalation clauses, Make sure you put that in the agent notes and make sure you put everything on the same way um, so that everyone has the same opportunity to know that that's what you're doing. So what happens if you do get an escalation clause anyway? Oh, this is like perfect question for Monica. <laughs> I think of the same way. <laughs> so like what happens if you do get an escalation clause? Does anybody have an idea? Like you said no escalation clauses and you get one. What Do you know what to do with it? Any ideas? Let your client direct what you do with it. Yeah. So, I mean, it's exactly right. Cause you have to present, and this is really big, big deal because I didn't know this and I was in violation until I took this job. I would tell people like, I didn't know. So you have to present every offer you get, no matter what. Did you know that you have to present a verbal offer? <laughs> I used to tell people all the time, I'm like, oh, I don't present verbal offers. <laughs> that was actually a direct violation, <laughs> which I didn't realize. So because I thought they had to be in writing, they have to be in writing to be actionable. But if they present something on the back of a napkin, you still need to present it to your client. What you would tell them is this offer came on the back of a napkin. <laughs> I don't give it a lot of credence, but I'm presenting this to you. So you know that it came through <laughs> kind of thing. But I, I had no idea. Cheryl did, because I said that. She was like, no, you have to present every offer. <laughs> okay, good. So basically, all right, here we go. Christina Foss, I had a deal where we said no escalation clauses, but a buyer said he would give one nonetheless. Yeah, so they do, they do come in there. Um, and uh, you do have to just let the client know, but then the client can also say, well, they didn't follow the directions. I'm kicking it out. I mean, it's they can do whatever they like with that information, right? Yeah. Um, then the people seeing waiving appraisals. That's such a good question. They're not, and I have to be really on it. Like, this is such a good question because I, I was talking with somebody who I don't think is on the call, but you can't waive an appraisal. You just can't waive it because the appraisal is done for the bank. What you can waive is the difference. So if it doesn't appraise out, you're guaranteeing that you'll pay the difference between the appraised price and the house, the appraisal of the house. 
house of uh, the price of the house, even if it doesn't um, pan out. So in other words, you know, you're 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 waiving your right to refuse the deal because of the appraisal. You def definitely need to check with the lender to make sure that that is okay, that they've got a financial situation that allow that to happen. But basically, you can um, uh, you can waive that ability to say, look, I will guarantee the difference in price. You bring up, Grace brought up another question that's good. It's like, what happens? There is a risk there because what happens if prices go way, way up between the time that you actually put the offer in and the time of the appraisal? You know, it's a risk, right? So you just want to make sure that that's the case. It does help. Um, have you guys had any problems with appraising, things not appraising out right now? I have not heard that lately, but I just want to ask. No? Okay. I think a lot of the offers are cash. Yeah. So I don't know if the appraise, you know, if the appraisal has been so important. That's we had one in Lake Bluff on a little house up there where the appraisal was much lower. And we did go back and ask the, the lender to redo it and they came up some more, but the buyer wanted the house enough so they made up the difference um, between the sale price and the lender appraisal. Okay. So it worked out. Okay. Um, one last. Can I, can I ask one thing about the escalation clause? Please go. And forgive me because I'm driving. So just yeah, no don't worries. wrap me out. Um, <laughs> so, um, so one of the things that I've noticed is happening is we've got a buyer, we've got, uh, I mean, a seller, and then we get say three offers, right? Say all three have escalation clauses, but interesting enough, nobody has raised their bid they have just put in escalation clauses. The question is, how do you do that to, how do you deal with that to the advantage of your seller? Because you know, some of these people have put in um, caps that, you know, 50, $100,000 more than um, what you're seeing on paper. So there's a couple of things you could do. You, you know, you have options. So you could go back to every person. So you've got sort of three op options. One is you could, the terms typically aren't exactly the same. And so you could look to see which one has the best terms and then talk to your clients that way, probably not recommended. The next one would be you go back to all three and say, look, everyone came in with escalation clauses. You're, you're a finalist. If you'd like to have this property or you'd like to do this, we're asking you not to resubmit without an escalation clause because we have three that are escalation clauses. So that would be one way, another just sort of honest, easy way to do it. And then the third would be to negotiate with each one individually. Like we always have that option, right? Nobody does that, but you could just start negotiating right. with each one individually. Okay. And there might Thank be other you. options. Yeah, you bet. There might be other options too that you guys have done that I'm not aware of because you sell a lot of real estate. Thanks. And I hope you feel better. Thank you. I do feel a lot better. I appreciate it. Um, and then Good. what about dual agency with multiple offers? Julie Rogers asked. I'm just going to ask a question. So I'm just, this is just a question. So do you know that in the bottom of your screen, you can, there's a little thing that says uh, you can raise your hand. It's reactions. Just click the reactions and they go by raise of hands. And I'm not trying to write anybody out because I've done them myself. So I'm going to raise my hand, but how many have done or do escalation? I mean, sorry, multiple uh, dual agency. If you raise your hand physically or just raise it with there. I mean, I've done them as well. Right. And it, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, when you have multiple offers, it does get a little sticky. Typically what people have been doing um, is that they will either give it out to somebody else and have that person handle that side of it. The only time you cannot do it is if you have a vested interest in that property. So mm -hmm. you, can, you, know, you cannot be on both sides of it if you have a vested interest. Um, I personally would also let every other agent know that if you're going to do it, that you are one of the bidders, that you're representing one of the bidders on that, just as a purpose of being safe. I, as you, a lot of you know, I've sat on the ethics panel for a long time and I got to hear cases. And I will say that 90% of the cases I ever heard at NASBAR, I mean, at, uh, you know, through ethics uh, complaints was on dual agency. And it's usually by, not from the other agent. Actually, those are actually settled pretty easily. It's almost always from the, the buyers because they don't understand or they, they say they understand, but they don't totally understand. And no matter how well you did at the end of the deal, it's the buyer that's actually the one that's coming back and saying, I felt like I wasn't represented properly. And they'll do it after the deal's closed, right? So just be aware that you are you do take a risk when you do those. But some people do them really, really well and they are legal in Illinois. 
Um, so if you do, just, just be very, very careful. Uh, Mary Grant said, can I throw a coming soon out there? Yeah, you can. We started those writers uh, as a push. I would just, again, make sure that you do have, you have to have a listing agreement, right? So you, before you can do a coming soon. Um, you also, if you're going to be putting it out, oh, <laughs> you do have a coming soon, sorry. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> yep, there's a great one coming up, 1440 Sheridan, 604. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> you, can, you can't even put a sign in front of that building, right? Mary Grant. Sorry, yeah, no sign. But if it, you have a coming soon on, doesn't have to be in, if you have a sign up, it has to be in the PLN, right? That's I don't correct. have a sign up. I just have a, um, the listing documents on right, my Mary, 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 we're not talking about your listings right now. This conversation's completely different. Thanks. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, Peter. <laughs> what does that mean, Peter? <laughs> She's interjecting with irrelevant information. No, we're also using this. Mary, no. Mary, put it on Facebook and send me an email. I love that. <laughs> no, so this is an opportunity for us. This is great that we're doing these things because I, I do think I'm walking away with a couple of things. One is... <laughs> We're going to do a couple. One is the Sierra Mathon. We're going to do two of those so that you can, we're going to sit together. And for anybody who would like to, we're going to send out five CRMs, just like we talked about. I don't promise very many things in this business, but I promise you, if you're feeling stuck or if you're feeling like I'm not doing anything to keep my business going, it's 100% free. It's super effective. And we're seeing a really good turnout from it, from people. That's your side of it. My side of it is I would like to see more activity as well from more act from more houses. This is an incredibly powerful group of people sitting on this call. We have a lot of influence on what can happen in the market. And I think if we do that, we'll actually have an effect that will start to loosen up some of the stuff that's taking place. We'll get these winter chills off. We'll get things moving on that. So we're going to do that. Two is we're going to explore doing a daily list so that we can send out anything we hear from you guys on in pocket listings. And my only request is you do please have paperwork signed uh, before you send it to us. That's really my only request. And then we'll figure out a way to get that out to everybody in the office. And we'll, we'll take that and go with it. I'm going to talk to IT about an easy way to get people set up so that you don't ever have to mess with that horrible, nasty agent app. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that maybe we get it so that it's sending stuff to you so you don't have to deal with it, but you're starting to see stuff that does come up. Like what happens when somebody not in our office puts a pocket listing in this area that you want to be aware of, right? They may be using the app. So I want to make sure that you're not missing out on those two. We're not the only game in town when it comes to things like that that happen. City agents do use it, other offices. So I just want to make sure that you guys are have full access to everything that's there. Um, I'm also going to do, what did I say I was going to do? One more thing. Oh, we'll send out a list of anything I hear that you guys are okay with me sending that's working with the buyers. I will also send that out to everyone. Again, I won't do that without your permission because sometimes we're a little sensitive to just what our own tactics were to get there. So if you, if I have your permission, I'll send that out. I have one request, Tom. Um, could we, um, given that a lot of our um, buyers and sellers are new Trier specific, as long as you're putting together that list, I'd, I don't want to add more work to you, but it would be lovely if we could coordinate with the Winnetka, I'm sorry, the Wilmette and the Glencoe offices and have a new Trier um, list of you coming soon or whatever. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you bet. And see, that's, and this is, that's a really good point. And I just want to make sure that there's, cause there'll be other people like from other offices or other, you know, that, that are not even in those two offices that sell Nutria. So I think that's even more important to make sure that we get that set up so that you guys are getting push notifications as well. But yeah, Natasha, I'll be happy to. Okay. Any other ideas or anything I missed that I said I would do and I'm not doing, how, how are you guys feeling just overall with the market? I know there's a lot of just talking to you individually, there's some people that are got some fear, some people are gung ho and are just going for it. So where are you guys? You can use the chat too, because I don't, we don't like to talk in this room. Okay, you're all good. Well, all right, so just know this. I, I truly am 100% available to you guys. And Sally, that baby is so cute. All of a sudden that just popped up on my screen. Oh my God, look at that. I don't know if you can see it, but 
Sally's screen. I think I can actually highlight this one second here. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> There's the little baby. Wow, look at that face. Cute. <laughs> oh, my <God>. really cute. <laughs> right. So I'll, um, I am 100% available though. Like I said, I've, I am talking to people individually a lot right now. And so I'm happy to continue to do that. Please just let me know. You can text me, call me, talk to Kendall, talk to Stacy. We'll definitely get everything going for you. And I know it's feeling a little tough right now. I do know for a fact that the pendulum is going to swing again and it's going to feel a little bit better. I think it's just doubly hard right now because we just came from one of the busiest years in our entire careers for some of us. And now it's like a little, it's just tighter. Our days on market went from, do you guys remember 2018 or 20? I remember when I started 20, 20 was when you drive through Winneka and every other house had a for sale sign. And it was taking sometimes eight, nine months to sell a house. I had that one on profit. Mm. That was just like, <laughs> just like, it was taking forever. And now we're kind of on the complete opposite end of it where we just, you know, the days on market went from seven months for some of these houses to seven hours. So it's, it's sort of a real new time for this. So I just want to make sure that you know that it is going to swing back again. And for the people who've done this for a while know that, but we'll just have to stick together as we get through this. And we'll, there's some things we can do right away to keep busy. So I'm here so in case you need anything. And I appreciate you taking the time to do it. Oh, Thank one last you. Thing, an idea that came up. We're going to start doing our monthly meeting at the same time every month. So that way I'm not scheduling it because I heard from a few of you that it was a little, you know, you just want to have something that you knew that it, when it was going to be. I think it's going to be the second Monday of every month, unless there's a holiday, but I will send that out. And then that way going forward, you guys can plan your calendars accordingly to that too. It was a good idea. All right. If you have any other ideas, let me know. We'll be sure to get that out to everybody. And Peter, I like the hat. All right, thanks guys. I appreciate it. Thank you.